um, in terms of management, I would say um, to you know have your goals, set solid goals, and pursue those goals, and have a plan for them, like a plan to that you can actually see yourself progressing and make following and accomplishing the steps of your plan, and don't let anything get in your way. It's all about time management and money management to me. Me personally, I didn't have anybody from the start to help me manage. So once I came up, you know, came up on money, it was a little hard for me to save and everything because it was new to me to have a lot of money and when you don't have people on your team to help you properly manage it and to save your money and help you plan for the future, you tend to blow it and you lose all your money by being just spending it on any, any and everything you see. But um, I would advise that if you can, just go ahead, you need to have a financial planner, you need to have someone on your team, have a solid team in the beginning so you can set up, set up, save your money and invest and plan for your future for whenever you're done. Me? No, I don't really know what I want to do after my career. I'm a kind of fly by the moment type of person. I've never really been a planner as in what I, you know, what I would want to do in the future. As far as like me being successful in track, it's nothing. It's not something that I dreamed I would be doing. It's kind of like I look at it. My life to me is, I say, it's a testimony of the the, the blessings of God. I mean, I, I I'm good at running, and it's just opened a lot of doors for me. I never really saw myself in this position. I never planned for it. It's just I try to be positive and focus on the talents that I have and capitalize on them, and it opens doors for me. I really never planned, but you know, I need to start planning because now that I'm getting older and I'm, you know, going out the game, it's, it, it, things are a little harder when you don't have your talent to rely on. If you've been relying on your talent all your life, and then it gets to a point where age kicks in and you have to move on to a different career, it's nice to have a plan, to have plan for that that point in your life, so you can make a smooth transition into the next phase of life. But as far as me having known what I want to do after track and field. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm going to kick back and I'm going to enjoy sleeping in and not getting up and going to practice, though. I really do. I think um, I can't speak for, you know, everybody in the world, and I certainly can't speak for, you know, coaches or uh, black people all over the world, but I think I can really give some insight to those of us that were born and raised in the United States of America. I feel like... Um, in a position of black families in America that from the, from the beginning we're not really sat down and given a proper foundation on how to manage time, how to manage money, or, or plan for your future. It tends to be like we get up and we live one day at a time. And to me it seems like, especially in my family, that's the way I was raised. And it, it, kind, of, it kind of makes it hard for you, especially when you get in your adult stage, when you get a little older and you have those bad habits of not planning, bad habits of not managing your time right, not being able to look into the future and saying, okay, I know I need to be here, so I need to take the time today to plan for my future tomorrow. And um, you, you keep those bad habits, and when you get older, it's hard to get rid of those bad habits. So I, tell you, I think it's a lot to do with you know what we see and how we were raised at, from infant stage up to an adult stage. As far as the black families in America, we don't tend, tend to stick together and have a foundation and have a plan, have programs to teach each other on how to live and be proper adults and be efficient in our lives. And yeah, try, I mean, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm saying that every black family in America or all over the world, well, I can only speak for America, that's where I'm from, I say that every black family doesn't have a plan or that a lot of us grew up like that. but. It seems like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. We do have families that, you know, take the time to, to plant the right seeds in their in their kids from from a youth. I mean, from the time they're small, so they can grow up with a solid future. It seemed like those days, like growing up when I was younger, you know, with my grandparents and their siblings, like they all stuck together. And today, it's like it's hard to even get two people, two siblings from the same family to even communicate. Like I can recall going home for holidays and I've been talking to my mom, like, mom, where's Aunt Gail, where's Uncle Jimmy? Like, 
why are we eating with them? What like we used to do? I mean, there's so many things that are different. I mean, it's like we so quick to nowadays, you know, to turn a turn a blind eye or turn our back on each other, but we can always depend on and look to to the white man for this is what we need. This is where I'm going instead of bringing our own community together and being able to supply for ourselves. It's I mean, I think it's sad. It's just disgusting to me. I mean, it really hurts my feelings. But I mean, I'm glad that we have people, people like yourselves, that's coming together to, you know, try to unite and bring it back.